Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's all great and fantastic and wonderful. Everything here is perfect. And as I feel like a news anchor. Everything here is perfect, Chet. As you can see, <laughs> uh, absolutely nothing got done down here last night. I ended up, um, <laughs> I, we'll talk about that. But I had some stuff to do and then uh, Em and I went out for dinner, so... Uh, I did not get to work on this last night. I'm probably going to try to work on it a little bit tonight. And then tomorrow's game night and whatever. It'll probably be the weekend before this is actually done. But thank you for comments, questions, all that sort of stuff on yesterday's video. I really, really, really enjoy talking workshop stuff. R I really enjoy it. Um, this is something I've done since I was a kid. Like, a toddler kid. Um, I, I don't know how many times I've told this story, but my dad was an auto mechanic. He was a... He was a car guy. Obviously, my name is Chevy. Dad was a car guy. And he taught uh, at a tech center, um, you know, a, a high school technical education center where they did all kinds of welding and construction and all that sort of stuff. My dad put himself through college as a carpenter. Uh, he worked for a construction company and he built houses. And uh, then he, you know, went through college as a mechanic. So my dad does all the things. Um, and because of my dad, I know how to do all the things. Uh, I know how to, you know, uh, fix the house and build a house or build a deck or, you know, work on stuff like this or work on my car or my bikes. And I was a mechanic for a long time. So I have, like, a whole lot of workshop time and knowledge ever since I was little because I've always been surrounded by workshop stuff and workshop projects. Uh, my dad is the kind of guy that does not call somebody to work on his house, and neither do I. I do it all myself, thanks to him. You know, he taught me all that stuff. So I've been around tools my whole life. Now, as far as this kind of stuff, not so much. Uh, uh, my dad didn't have a table saw until I was older. Uh, we didn't really do fine woodworking. Most of the wood that I had to mess with was stuff that he brought home from either decrating stuff at his auto repair shop uh, or from the um, from the construction class. They would build a house every year to sell. He would bring home scraps of construction lumber. So I got to make all kinds of stuff as construction lumber. And so one of the things that I want to talk about, specifically Jonathan asked about I talked about on my plans this being three quarter inch plywood and accounting for that. And he said, "Did you is your plywood undersized?" Yes, it is. Uh, if you don't know that, pretty much anything that you buy dimensionally at a store is not the dimension that it says it is. Um, I, I think that's fairly universal. But even for plywood, um, this is three quarter inch plywood. This is actually let's let's zero this thing out real quick. This is actually. 0.724, not 0.75. So this is like a 32nd of an inch under three quarters of an inch. And that's very, very normal. Um, it makes things a little bit difficult when you're trying to cut grooves perfectly for this. You have to not cut a three quarter inch groove, that sort of thing. Uh, and did I account for this? Yes and no. Um, I accounted for it by not making anything dimensionally critical. Meaning that if you look back at the plans I showed you yesterday, the sides work, you know, are vertical. All of the center pieces, there's three center horizontal supports. It doesn't matter what those dimensions are. They just have to be the same. And all that's going to affect is the amount of overhang that I have on the top of the table. And if it's, you know, two inches or it's two inches and an extra 30 second per side, doesn't really matter. Uh, and then all the vertical supports, um, they're also going to be slightly different, meaning that if I put uh, a three-quarter inch plywood in here as a shelf and I wanted them to be 10 inches apart, if I measured and put them in not accounting for that 30 seconds of an inch, then by the time I have two shelves and my center divider goes in there that's exactly 10 inches, it would be a 16th of an inch off and it wouldn't fit. Uh, but none of that actually happens in this particular design. What I'm going to do is put a shelf in place, measure it where I want it, 
then put my 10 inch spacer in place and then put the next shelf in. So I'm not gonna build to the ideal, I'm building to the actual pieces that I have. And then the other thing is I haven't cut any of the doors and drawers because I'm going to size them based on the actual sizes of the openings. They're all going to be slightly off from what I put in here. The top is supposed to be 14 inches. It's actually going to be 14 minus three quarter because there's going to be a stretcher that I won't have access to. So that top space, if I put a drawer in there, is going to have to be a different size. My 10 inch space will be whatever my 10 inch spacer is. So I'll be able to make drawers based on that. And then the space down at the bottom is just going to be whatever it ends up being after factoring in all this error. Then I'll make drawers. Uh, and, and I learned that the hard way. Uh, I learned that as a kid, when all I had to mess with was a circular saw and a, what I called a jigsaw as a kid. I, I still call this a jigsaw, a saber saw, whatever you want to call it. No, I call it a saber saw. That's right. I call it a jigsaw now, but I grew up knowing this is a saber saw. And I had very inaccurate tools. And so I would draw up this idea. I'm going to make this and I'm going to make that and I'm going to make this. And I would cut all the pieces and then try to assemble them only to find out nothing fits because I didn't cut it perfectly accurate. And I would end up with gaps. I'd end up with, you know, wonky things that weren't square because I tried to cut everything to fit first, not realizing that real world measurements are probably going to be different than what's on here, you know. And I think that goes for anything. Anything you want to make has a tolerance, uh, especially if you're talking about, like, engineering type stuff. If you're getting into... Um, you know, automotive engineering. If you're talking about finishing a um, an engine, like you want to rebuild an engine, there is a tolerance for all of the gaps. They're allowed to be a certain amount out. And that's just fact because it's impossible to make it perfect. It's also impossible to cut these sides exactly 31 and a half inches. I mean, maybe it is possible in your shop, but in my shop, this this probably is a little bit undersized. All of these pieces are slightly dimensionally different than what's on the plan, and you have to account for that. You have to account for that as you're building, and you have to be able to build it in a, such a way that fixes all of those errors, or at least it, it's not going to fix it. I, I can't, you know, if I didn't cut these side stretchers to be exactly 28 and a half, and these pieces of plywood aren't exactly three quarters of an inch and a half, or three quarters of an inch, this table is not going to be exactly 28 and a half inches wide. We already know it from the discussion I just had. It's going to be at least a sixteenth of an inch shorter because the plywood is 30 second thinner. It's probably going to be slightly different than that. Does it matter? In this case, no. It means absolutely nothing. Like, it's just my ideal dimensions. If this was some sort of, like, engineering structural component, there would be a tolerance, and I would have to account for that. Or if I was trying to cut dados in my, in my pieces... For instance, you know, if the center shelf, I, I'm going to have this 10 inch center shelf, right? If I had dadoed my shelves into these side supports and I had made them exactly 10 inches apart, would my center support fit? Don't know. I probably, in that case, would not have cut it prior to uh, having the side supports or having the center shelves in place. I would have then measured that center uh, divider and cut it to a particular measurement. In this case, I'm going to put the top support. I'm going to start at the top where the router sits. I have two supports that go in. I'll put a shelf in. Then I'll put my 10-inch divider in. Then I'll put the next shelf in. So it doesn't it doesn't really matter uh, where those parts land. It, it, it's just, this was my ideal. What's going to be in the real world will be measurably different. Does measurably different matter to you? I don't know. If it's a foot off, then yeah, something went crazy wrong. <laughs> uh, you know, if it's three quarters of an inch off, then maybe something went wrong. But I still, in this case, it doesn't really matter. As long as it's not too high, as long as the whole cabinet doesn't stand taller than my table saw. Actually, in that case, I could shim the table saw. Uh, I don't move the table saw, so I could lift it and shim it so that it's perfectly flat, you know, height and in plane with the cabinet. Uh, ideally, this is a, going to be about a quarter of an inch uh, lower than my table saw because I don't really need it to be a smooth like outfeed. It just needs to be support for long boards that hang, uh, and I don't do a whole lot of those cuts, so you know it doesn't have to be accurate. If it does, I can always shim the router cabinet, you know. But uh, you know, thank you for all the comments. Um, I'm I'm gonna. 
I'm going to enjoy putting this together just because I don't do a whole lot of cabinet work. Um, I have built a few cabinets in my time, but uh, I don't get to do it that often, and it's a fun process. I will probably be joining these with a couple of biscuits in each piece and then screws, and the biscuits are just there because if you've ever tried to join two pieces of plywood with pocket holes, it's nearly impossible to keep them from sliding. And so when you when the screw goes in at that weird angle, it'll shift everything. And then, then, then things start to get wonky. So I will probably put some biscuits in here just to help everything snap together and stay in the correct orientation. Fun process. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know to sound smart is latency. It is a noun meaning a period of dormancy that precedes a period of great growth or action. We knew that Abigail's focus on extremely liberal causes was merely a latency that would end with her focus solely on charitable giving to the proper charities. Latency. L-A-T-E-N-C-Y. Does, does that word really have a the connotation, I guess, of proceeds a period of growth or action, of great growth or action. Um, I've always determined, like, I, I think of latency in a networking uh, framework of way of thinking, and I don't really think latency has anything to do with great action.